Did you know that the first hermetic seal was developed in 300 AD? And this very first hermetic seal was called the Seal of Hermes and was an airtight glass tube mostly used for alchemy. Today, hermetic seals are commonplace, from the food we eat to the semiconductors we design. And did you also know that this is the very first chalk talk to explore hermetic seals in chambers? It's true. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Many hermetic chambers today require electrical pathways to provide internal equipment with power, data, or signals, or to receive data and signals from equipment within the chamber. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Brad Terras from Cinch Connectivity Solutions and I explore the role that seals and connectors play in the performance of hermetic chambers. We examine the methodologies to determine hermetic seal leaks, the benefits of epoxy hermetic seals, and how cinch connectivities, epoxy-based seals, and hermetic connectors can add value to your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Cinch Connectivity Solutions. Hi, Brad. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Amelia. Okay, so we're talking about hermetically sealed applications today and how to choose the best connectors for these applications. But Brad, before we dig into the details, can you give us some background? What exactly is a hermetically sealed chamber? Yeah, hermetically sealed chambers are containers that are airtight. The reasons for these chambers vary widely and they are not uncommon. Most food packaging is hermetically sealed to keep food fresh and maintain flavor. Here we see in this image documents stored in a hermetically sealed chamber to keep them from oxidizing. The oxidation would cause the fading of the inks for these important documents. The word hermetic comes from a story about a Greek magician named Hermes who invented a magic seal to keep vessels airtight. Fantastic. Now, Brad, what kind of applications are we talking about for these hermetically sealed chambers? Hermetically sealed airtight chambers are common, and many require electrical circuits to pass through the chamber walls. This is needed to provide internal equipment with power, data, or signals, or to receive data and signals from equipment within the chamber. Hermetic chambers are found in biotech, and biotech can have very high contamination requirements for growing biologicals and containing those biologicals and preventing any outbreaks. Another industry is the semiconductor industry. They also use hermetic chambers to reduce contaminators. And they need to control atmospheres for specific chemical reactions for producing materials. These atmospheres will have specific compositions with a variety of partial pressures. They also need to control temperatures and pressures for optimizing reactions. Navigation systems heavily rely on hermetically sealed chambers. GPS is one navigation tool, but aircraft have redundant systems, and they use inertial navigation to provide positioning data. The highly sensitive inertial navigation systems have very controlled chambers to work reliably at sea level and at high altitude. Chemical and pharmaceutical processing requires highly controlled chambers. Many of these processes need to be monitored and also are powered by external sources. CVD and PVD ovens, that's chemical vapor deposition or physical vapor deposition ovens, are very common chambers with highly controlled atmospheres. This is just four examples of where hermetic chambers require electrical pathways. There are many more beyond these listed. Okay, so what do we need to keep in mind when it comes to performance here? Yeah, not all chambers require the same level of air tightness. Different applications have a variety of expectations. For example, plastic food packaging is not expected to maintain flavor as long as canned food. Even longer lifetimes are needed for inertial navigation on aircraft, which needs to be functional for decades. The measurement system used to define these differences is based on the leak rate. It is physically how much gas will pass through the hermetic chamber over time. The hermetic connectors, which are the electrical pass-throughs, are expected to have somewhat of a leak rate. The key is how much is suitable for the application. 
That makes sense. Now, how can we test those seal leaks? On the display, there's a variety of test methods for measuring the leak rate of an item, in this case, a hermetically sealed electrical connector. I hope these make sense to the viewers. They are listed in a Goldilocks manner. The pressure decay method is the lowest cost and is good for low level hermetic materials. The mass spectrometry method is the highest cost and is used for extreme hermetic requirements. The tracer gas method is economical for a high level of hermetic sealing without being prohibitively expensive. Let's focus on the tracer gas method. This works well for electrical connectors. Helium gas is usually used because of the small size of the helium molecules and it is not volatile. The helium gas is presented on one side of the connector and a detector on the other side measures the helium atoms in parts per billion. The value of the leak rate vary logarithmically. 10 to the negative 4 is much larger than 10 to the negative 12. Varying rates are measurable using the appropriate test method from the previous slide. Helium is the de facto gas used for these values. So Brad, can you talk a little bit about the different types of hermetic seals? Yes, here's two types of hermetic seals that rely on glass as an insulator for the electrical connectors. We should all still be familiar with incandescent light bulbs, which are hermetically sealed to prevent oxidation of the tungsten filament. This high volume, low cost method does require work to match the coefficients of thermal expansion over the working range of temperatures. The other method is found on heavier duty applications. High power circuits will use these types of seals. Also, the ultra low leak rate applications rely on these glass seals. Another type of electrical insulator is polymers. An epoxy has been shown to provide high levels of a hermetic sealing compared to other polymers. Epoxy has additional properties that make them ideal for electrical connectors. The bonding of epoxy to metal is very good and assures the connector remains stable physically in place. Epoxy is also a great electrical insulator, which is important for electrical connectors, in preventing shorts. The thermal conductivity of epoxy is helpful in many applications where heat builds up. The epoxy counters the heat buildup by conducting the heat away from the seal and preventing any degradation of the seal. Epoxy's chemical resistance makes it useful in chemical and physical reactors where low levels of contamination are required for those processes to perform according to plan. So Brad, when it comes to these epoxy seals, what kind of benefits are we looking at? Yeah, great question that brings the presentation together, the value of the application. Epoxy hermetic seals reduce the cost of hermetically sealing electrical connectors. The material cost is not significantly less, but the assembly processes are minimized. The epoxy can be poured into place at room temperature. Specialized molds are not required either. The connector itself is designed to retain the liquid epoxy in place until it cures. Reducing the processing and being easier to install then expands the amount of applications that can economically consider hermetic sealing. This improves the quality of many systems that previously relied on inferior seals or were not hermetically sealed at all. Okay, so Brad, what does Cinch offer in this kind of epoxy? Yeah, Cinch developed the material and processes for epoxy hermetic seals over a decade ago, and now some of the most critical systems rely on these seals. The epoxy-based seals have been unique in the marketplace and have been applied to a wide range of applications. Cinch's materials and methods of processing the seals is proprietary. The technology is well understood within Cinch and has expanded into additional product lines as well. Great. Now, what does Cinch offer in terms of hermetic connectors? The original product line to develop epoxy-based hermetic seals is Cinch's MicroD product line, which is called Duracon. MicroDs are often used for signal, data, and low power for industrial and military applications. They are a standardized connector based on the MIL-83513 specification, so they mate with many other suppliers. The initial application for the hermetically sealed microdes was inertial navigation units. These are used on commercial and military aircraft. 
These industries have durable requirements, so the technology was developed and qualified to very high standards. Okay, so we also want to talk about MicroDs as well, right? What does Cinch offer here? The MicroD product line is wide-ranging, but not all use the hermetic epoxy. The DCDH family is a standardized catalog offering that does utilize this epoxy and provides a 10 to the negative 7 helium leak rate. The catalog items are used for rear mounting of the connector into an enclosure. This works best where the internal pressure is higher than the external. The blue O-ring provides the rear mounting seal. Another product feature that you could see in the image is the mounting holes. These are not through holes, which would allow additional leak rates. The recommended hardware provides a jack post on the enclosure's exterior while retaining the connector to the enclosure wall inside the chamber. Overall, Duracon is a world leader in hermetic microD connectivity, with stock immediately available from distribution. Excellent. Now, Brad, does Mauser offer these Duracon microDs as well? Yes. Mauser does a great job of stocking the standardized catalog hermetic microD connectors and the associated mounting hardware. Most standard microD sizes are readily available to delivery, and additional sizes are available for order. In addition to holding stock, Mauser supports these products with drawings and models of the product, which are available for downloading from their website. Excellent. Now, Brad, what if my audience needs a custom solution? Can you help them out here as well? Absolutely. This could be the biggest benefit of the epoxy seal. Because the processing is less complex, does not require high temperatures, and does not require any specialized molds, the epoxy can be efficiently applied in custom applications. In most of these cases, we simply seal a circuit that passes through a small slit in the chamber cover. Then we mount the microD to that circuit on the outside and mount a connector to the circuit inside the chamber. This provides a robust mounting of the connector and a higher quality hermetic seal because the seal's cross-section has been minimized with just having a slit. The entire assembly is then plug-and-play because there are connectors on both sides of the hermetic seal. Okay, so how would a custom solution compare with a standard hermetic micro-D? Going the route of custom should not be considered for all cases, but for moderate and especially high-volume applications, this solution reduces the amount of processing and inspection required at subsequent steps, thereby reducing complexity and cost. The custom applications are delivered as a complete assembly, which reduces the amount of suppliers the customer needs for sourcing components. The quality of the hermetic seals is higher for custom applications, usually resulting in a lower leak rate. The delivered assembly is plug and play and does not require any soldering or wire processing. Each assembly is tested and there's traceability to each product, which is maintained by us. The overall installed cost is much lower, especially in applications where seals and welds require additional testing. On this slide here, we see the standard Hermetic MicroD product offering, which can seem large because of all the sizes and hardware options. But the key factor is knowing the number of circuits required. Often only one plug and one socket of each size is stocked with hardware sold separately. Therefore, the whole product is minimized quite a bit. Okay. Now, do you guys offer CAD models here as well? Yes. We want to support the design engineers as best we can and get them the information they need to complete their designs and meet their schedules. Excellent. Well, Brad, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Amelia. Yeah, I just want to say our Hermetic MicroDs are an awesome solution where it's applied. It solves real problems at an affordable cost, and I hope it helps the viewers with their programs. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Cinch Connectivity Solutions. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.